All right, guys, welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. This is Ali Plays, and today we're going to be doing a top 10 best non void epic champions for Arena. So, we're looking at the champions that are not void. If you guys want me to do a void list, let me know down in the comment section. So, uh, this is going to be ranked in order, and this is just my opinion. So, that's a disclaimer. My opinion uh, and is not fact, but we should have a similar list if you guys did a list of your own. And I will give reasonings why I think these champions are where they are. And um, I will try to do some honorable mentions in the end. So the last time I did something like this, I didn't do it in order and it was in August. So that's a while ago. So it's time to update it for the year ends. So this is going to be for December uh, 2019, the top 10 best non void epic champions for arena. So at number 10, we have Shatterbones. So I think Shatterbones would have been higher on my list um, from August. I didn't do an order again, as I said, but he is number 10 on my list now. The last time um, Ryan Beast was on this list. So Ryan Beast, unfortunately, Rain Beast, fortunately he's not on this list and playing decided to nerf him uh, for whatever reason. He was just annoying for earlier um, arena battles for bronze and silver. Uh, if you guys know how to fight him, he's not even an issue. So rest in peace to Ryan Beast. Let's have a moment of silence for Ryan Be Rain Beast. You keep butchering his name, man. Poor guy. <laughs> you know what's hilarious? Okay, we're not gonna hold off on the moment of silence. The hilarious part is it's almost Christmas time, right? So you'd expect uh, them not to nerf him close to Christmas. Okay, so yeah, moment of silence for Rain Beast. Cue this cue the sad music as well. Okay, so let's talk about Shatter Bones. So his basic attack is good that it increases attack for all allies uh, if he crits, but it's only 25% increased attack, so it's not a 50% one, it's a smaller one. Uh, what makes him good is his two, his A2 and his A3. Uh, his hail ability attacks all enemies three times, and he has a 50% chance to decrease the turn by 30%, so that is very good for Arena. And if you guys max that out, there's going to be a 75% chance on a four turn cooldown. So this ability is very good for Arena. And also Warcry. So this ability, you, honestly, I don't know which one you would use first. If you want, if you need to decrease the turn meter, use uh, Hail first. If you need to <laughs> increase your allies' turn meter, uh, you use Warcry. So he places decreased speed on all enemies for two turns. So that is pretty good. And it fills the turn meter of all allies by 25%. So that is very good. And also, I don't know who runs accuracy in Arena, but he's an accuracy lead for Arena. He increased by 70. Coming in at number 9 is Luria. So Luria is an attack based champion, um, what makes her good is not her basic attack, I know it has decreased defense and heal reduction but you know Rain Beast is not even in arena anymore, we don't gotta worry about that. Uh, it's her AoE right here that has a 50% chance of placing a freeze debuff for one turn and enemies killed by the skill cannot be revived. Um, most likely she won't be killing them with this ability but it's a bonus, she will block the revive. But uh, what makes her really good is that freeze. It's a 75% chance if you max that out uh, to land free, so it's very good. Build with some accuracy, and you're good to go. Uh, Hex is also pretty good, it removes all buffs, and also has a 80% chance of placing a block boss debuff for two turns. So that is very good for Arena, as you can see. Yeah, she's very good. Um, I will try to get some gameplay for Luria. I'll write it down on the bottom if I got <laughs> if I got it or not. My Luria is not that good, so yeah, uh, yeah, she's number nine on my list. Coming in at number 8, we have Sinesha. So Sinesha is a support champion, but she actually deals, deals some damage. Uh, she has an AoE that places an extra hit on enemies with less than 50% HP. And she can uh, put the target skill on cooldown, which is very huge for Arena. If you are controlling it, and heals the ally with the lowest HP by 25%. And also she can equalize the HP of all allies, so if you, even if you have 100% um, heal reduction on your team, you can still heal because it's not even healing, it's just <laughs> equalizing their HP. Um, 
So it's brought up to the level of the ally with the highest HP and then heals the target ally by 10% of the max HP. Uh, the heal won't go through if there's a heal reduction, obviously, but um, if there isn't, it's still pretty good. So yeah, she's a good champion, and she also synergizes with Skull Crown. If you have Skull Crown, you can run them together. So when uh, Sinesh is on the same team as Skull Crown, when Skull Crown dies, she comes back to life, uh, which can be really annoying. Number seven, we have Zargala. So Zargala finally made <laughs> made a pretty uh, big impact on my list because I've been facing her a lot in arena. She deals a lot of damage. So she can attack an enemy, has a 50% chance of placing a 25% weakened debuff for one turn on her basic attack. So that's pretty good. She can hit like a truck. Uh, Devastate attacks one enemy and still activates a crack armor skill if the target is killed by this attack. So that is very, very powerful because the crack armor attacks all enemies three times. And then after the first hit, she has a 50% chance of placing a decreased defense debuff on all enemies for two turns. So as you can see, that is very, very powerful. And she can also increase ally accuracy in all battles by 40%. Not 40%, 40. So yeah, she is very good. She's got a lot of, she deals a lot of damage and she's, uh, I actually see her in plat close to platinum tier in gold four in arena. People are still running her. Coming in at number six, we have Grim Skin. So this guy got reworked. This guy used to be one of the worst uh, epic champions in the game. He was defense based. Now his damage is based on defense. So I will not have any gameplay of uh, Grim Skin because I do not have Grim Skin. I'll try to search for you. If I did, then it will be popping up right now. Uh, you can decrease speed on his basic attack. Uh, that is not that good, but right here is what makes him really good. He attacks one enemy twice. Each hit, uh, when maxed out, he has a 70% chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn. And he has a 60% chance when maxed out of placing a provoke debuff on all enemies for one turn if the first provoke debuff is placed. So this guy can potentially uh, AoE provoke the whole team. So that is very, very good for Arena. That is what Molly Tankard does. That's why she's very good in Arena. She does that, and this is on a three turn cooldown. So yeah, you can see that it's very good. Also, he has an AoE that has an 80% chance of removing one round above from each target. Buff removal is very good for Arena, removing those, uh, what is it, unkillables, removing uh, block damage, things like that. And also his speed is 99, so he is pretty fast. Make him fast, build him some accuracy, um, throw some defense on him, and then you have a very, very good uh, Arena champion. Coming in at number five, we have Gorgoreb. So Gorgoreb is really good because of his aura skill, increased ally speed in the arena by 23%. And also he has a revive, he revives any that allies with 25% HP and then he heals them by 25%. And he also fills the turning meal of all allies by 15% and places a 50% increased attack buff on allies for two turns. And his basic attack is also good. He has a 50% chance of, place, of removing one random buff. There's going to be a 75% chance when maxed out. So I will show some gameplay of Gorgoreb. I do have him, I used to use him in Arena, I'm not using him anymore. And that's the reason why he's number five on my list. Coming in at number four, we have Seeker. So I wasn't gonna play Seeker this high, but because people, like look at this guy's speed, 103 speed. I've seen people running this guy as lead, he's allied defense arena by 30%. And he, since, since he has such high base speed, they can actually use this guy and have him go first before your uh, speed team goes first, which is pretty crazy if you ask me. Uh, he has a chance to place him provoke on his basic attack, which which is good. It's really annoying. You can mess up any team that you want. What makes him really good is that he's fast and he's capable of filling the turn meter of all allies by 30%. Any increased attack buff on all, he can place a 50% increased attack buff on all allies for two turns, and then he gets an extra turn after that. So you use this move first, and then you use your basic attack. And his passive ability, uh, he heals himself by 20% HP and plays the increased defense buff on all eyes for two turns when he gets hit with a critical hit. So yeah, this guy is a really annoying champion, very, very fast. Um, if you guys are not building him with pure speed, I don't know what you guys are doing. <laughs> but no judgment, man. Coming in at number three, we have Tayrell, the defense-based champion, one of the best epics in the game. Uh, so his damage is based on defense. This guy is, a, this guy is very, very durable can dish out a lot of damage and very, very annoying to, play, to fight. So this guy can place decreased attack on his basic attack, um, double hit. He has an AOE that has a 75% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns. And if the target is under decreased attack, so if you have another decreased attacker, you can place sleep debuffs on the enemy. So that is very good for arena. Also, he can decrease the turn meter of a target by 50%. And if the attack fully depletes the target's turn meter, so if the target has 50% turn meter, or less and then he depletes it, it will place a stun debuff for two turns on that target. 
And also he has a universal aura skill, increased ally defense and all battles by 25%. So yeah, Tayrell is a really good champion. Uh, you guys probably know that by now. So we're gonna just move on to number two. So number two, we have Skull Crusher. So I always play Skull Crusher ahead of Tayrell. I know Tayrell is very good. Uh, the only reason why I put Skull Crusher ahead of him is because of this counterattack. So he's the only epic champion that has counterattack and AOE um, counterattack for your whole team. You can place ally protection on it as well for your whole team and counterattack. And then he has unkillable on himself, so he's really hard to kill. He has heal reduction on his basic, even though it's 50%. Uh, he's defense based, damage based on defense. And his passive ability is pretty good too. It decreases the duration of all debuffs on him by one turn at the start of each turn. And yeah, so just because of his counterattack, I have him ahead of Tayrell. If not for that, Tayrell will be number two. So who is number one? So number one, we have the miscreated monster. So yeah, this guy was a Halloween champion. All these Halloween champions are really good, especially the epics. Uh, we got Madame Cerise, we got uh, miscreated monster. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's it for the epics. Yeah, you got uh, the legendaries Brackets of Shifter. The only one that wasn't good was Harvest Jack. So Harvest Jack was the worst one that was released. So why is this guy number one? So he's HP based uh, epic champion. His basic attack is a double hit that has a has a 25% chance when maxed out of placing a stun debuff for one turn. So stun is very good for arena. And then he has a 60% chance of placing a decreased defense debuff for one turn if the tar stun is placed. And his damage is based on HP. So this guy can deal a lot of damage. Uh, Lightning Storm, he attacks all enemies and he has a 50% chance of placing a stun debuff for one turn. So he got stuns um, on almost every single part of his kit so far. And he can place a shield buff on all eyes for three turns equal to 25% of the damage inflicted. So if you have this guy built with a lot of HP, which he should because he's HP based, damage based on HP, this guy's going to be putting a huge shield on your allies and placing stun on the enemies. So that is very, very powerful for arena. Uh, it's alive. He places 50% ally protection buff on all eyes except himself for three turns. So not only does he place that shield, he also places ally protection. And then he has a self heal. He heals himself by 50% of their, their max HP. And he plays a continuous heal buff on this self for three turns. In his passive ability, he places a fear debuff on the attacker for one turn whenever an ally is attacked while under an ally protection buff. So fear is really annoying for arena. It's, it's like, uh, it makes it so they have a chance of them not even taking a turn if you're trying to use an ability. And also his aura skill increased ally HP in the arena by 33%. So if you need that extra boost in HP in arena, it's very beast. So I will try to have a, gameplay of miscreated monster on the screen if i don't i apologize and yeah so that's it for my list let me know down in the comment section if you guys agree with my list and let's keep it civil guys and if you guys found this video helpful or entertaining anyway make sure you guys drop a like and if you guys are new to the channel and you like to see then consider subscribing i make great shadow legends and dragon champions content almost every single day and while you're at it you can enable notifications if you want to stay up to date on all my latest content so as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.